Hello and welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okoro. Nigerian President Muhammad Buhar has urged members of the militant group, the Niger Delta Avengers, to embrace peace and unity, warning that Niger's unity is not negotiable. The president was speaking at the presidential villa when residents of the federal capital territory, led by Vice President Yemushi Banjo, paid a Salah homage after the Eid prayers in Abuja. He said the federal government had commenced the process of identifying the numbers of groups involved in militancy in the Niger Delta region. The Niger Delta Avengers has carried out attacks on oil facilities in Niger's southern oil region. Attacks by the group in the Niger Delta has pushed crude production in Nigeria to 30-year lows in recent weeks, although the Niger National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, last week said output was rising due to repairs. President Bu Muhammad Buhari has urged Nigerians to be patient with his administration, just as he promised better days ahead for the country. In a message issued from his office to mark the Eid al Fitr celebrations, President Buhari said he was not unaware of what Nigerians were going through. He urged Nigerians to uphold lessons learned during the Ramadan season. President Buhari also spoke on the suffering of Nigerians in the Northeast region as a result of the Boko Haram insurgency. He appealed to Nigerians to remember the millions of others who are suffering deprivation due to violence by the terrorists. The United States government has warned its citizens in Lagos, Nigeria, of a possible terrorist attack during the Idel Fitri celebrations. In a statement posted on its website, the State Department said that hotels mostly visited by Westerners are being targeted by the terrorist groups. The embassy also called on the Nigerian government to be vigilant and tighten up its security in the state. Niger has been terrorized by Islamist sect Boko Haram for so many years now. Just last year, Boko Haram pledged allegiance to ISIS, another deadly sect. In the past days, the Islamic, the Islamic State, also known as ISIS or ISIL, has carried out attacks in Turkey, Bangladesh, Iraq and Saudi Arabia, killing over 300 people. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhar has condemned the suicide bombing that occurred on Monday in Medina, Saudi Arabia. Medina is Islam's second holiest city. Condoling with Saudi authorities, President Buhari said, the attack validates the claim that terrorism really has nothing to do with Islam. Three apparently coordinated suicide attacks on Monday targeted Medina, the U.S. consulate in Jeddah and the largest Shiite Muslim city of Katif. At least four security officers were killed near the Prophet's mosque in Medina, while only the bombers died in Jeddah and Katif. The Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Niger Pengerson has directed its members to begin a nationwide strike on Thursday. According to Pengerson Acting Sec General Secretary Lumumba Okubawa, the strike will affect all subsectors of the oil and gas industry. Okubawa said the strike action became inevitable after the association tried to engage the Nigerian government in a dialogue, which ended inconclusive. The group has asked, asked the Nigerian government to address the issues being faced by the oil industry. Sierra Leone's Deputy High Commissioner to Niger, Major General Alfred Nelson Williams, who is retired, has regained his freedom days after he was abducted by unknown gunmen. The envoy was kidnapped in Kaduna State last Friday, July 1st. A statement by the spokesperson of the Nigerian police, Don Awuna, states that Williams was on Tuesday reunited with the Sierra Leone High Commissioner. Although his abductors had reportedly demanded a sum of $40 million, the police did not state if any ransom was eventually paid. The statement did not also reveal if any of the abductors was arrested. The Corps Marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRS, has urged motorists to ensure this to ensure safety measures as they embark on long journeys for the Idel Fitri holidays. Boboye Oyoyemi in a statement said and reassured, he reassured road users about his agency's level of awareness to ensure safety within this period. Oyoyemi said members of the public should contact FRS through its call center for prompt response in cases of road crash or other emergencies. Factional chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Ali Modashev, is on his way to submit the name of his own candidate for the Edo governorship election to INEC. 
His faction had organized a primary election and Matthew Idu Orie Kwemwen emerged winner of that election. Sheriff has already presented the party certificate of return to Idu Idu Oriye Kwemwen ahead of the September 10th election. Another faction of the PDP led by Ahmed McCarthy has launched its campaign for the Edo elections for another candidate, Osage Ize Iyamu. A court in Port Harcourt had sacked Sheriff from office. However, he says he would rely on the judgment of Justice Okon Abang of the Federal High Court in Abuja, which opposed his post as PDP chairman. Legendary Nollywood actress Buki Ajayi has passed away. The actress died on Wednesday, July 6. She was aged 82. Reports say the iconic actress had been ill for some time now. She made her last public appearance at the 2016 AMVCA in March, where she won the AMVCA Merit Award. Buki Ajayi kicked off her acting career with 1970s hit series Village Headmaster, and she later got a role in Amaka Egwe's Checkmate. She went on to feature in over a hundred movies, including Mother of George, Indecent Girl, Diamond Ring, Witches, Thunderbolt, International Movie Critical Assignment, which was shot in South Africa, among others. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll look at business and international stories. Don't go away. From the multi award winning filmmaker, what were you doing at the beach resort? The first ever pan African movie. Uh, we've all met at company retreats in the past before, each one with a mission and a strategy to determine who will be the next CEO. I googled you last night and I came up with nothing. Nada. I'm off the grid. I fly below the signal. Come into the cinemas from the 15th of July 2016. 10 VIP CEO premiere tickets and 20 autographed DVDs up for grabs when you pay for the OLX Do It For Me service from 6th of June to 1st of July 2016. Visit OLX.com.ng to book a champ now. OLX, sell it! Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. We are only doing our job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. Yeah. Now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Hey. Ah. I, I, okay, which guy will be this one? Ah, I don't understand. I mean, I mean, you know your problem. You are greedy. Uh, I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back to Business Stories. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria has sacked the board and management team of commercial lender Sky Bank. CBN Governor Godwin Imifili made the announcement at a press briefing in Lagos State, Southwest Nigeria. He said the CBN had conducted a stress test and decided to replace the chairman, chief executive and all non-executive directors after they failed to recapitalize the bank. Our correspondent, Abiola Ismail, now reports. Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefiele rarely holds a press conference in Lagos, and when he does, it must be something very serious. And so, when he assembled journalists in the CBN conference room, everyone knew something big was coming. The Central Bank of Nigeria has called this special press briefing on the banking industry in order to inform the general public of its decision to effect changes in the key personnel on the board and management of Skybank PLC with effect from today, Monday, July the 4th, 2016. Specifically, these changes relate to the chairman, all non-executive directors of the bank, as well as the managing director, 
Deputy Managing Director, and the two longest seven executive directors on the management team. These proactive moves have become unavoidable in view of the persistent failure of SkyBank PLC to meet minimum thresholds in critical prudential and adequacy ratios, which has culminated in the bank's permanent presence at the Central Bank of Nigeria lending windows. In particular, SkyBank's liquidity and non-performing loans ratios have been below and above the required thresholds, respectively, for quite a while. The governor made it clear to the Apex Bank the took the decision after holding several meetings with SkyBank to address the challenge but without success. SkyBank has been in troubled waters for the past 12 months, with the size of its non-performing loan belonging beyond acceptable limit. Its stocks have been doing badly in the capital market, with so many investors selling off their holdings. Despite all the problems, the Serbian government made it clear the bank is not in distress. Sky Bank is not in distress and remains a healthy bank in the system. The CBN hereby assures depositors, shareholders and all relevant stakeholders that there is no reason for concern or panic as we seek their continued cooperation and support for the bank at this time. It is our expectation that the shareholders and remaining executive directors would work seamlessly with a new team to ensure that the fortunes of the bank are restored in the shortest possible time. The CBN has now appointed a new management to run the bank while it shops for new buyers. The just banking industry has come under close scrutiny in recent times, with so many banks battling liquidity problems and having to lay workers to cut overhead and keep their finances in good shape. Despite the challenges, the central bank continues to maintain that the Nigerian bank industry is still on a sound footing. Abiola Smile, TV360, Lagos. Still on the banking industry, CBN Governor Godwin Emefili insists that Nigeria's banking sector was not distressed. The strategic health of the banking industry is still good at this time. Uh, no doubt there are, uh, um, what I say, as a result of the global shocks, there are certain weakening of certain ratios, but those ratios have not weakened to a point where we can say, that um, the banking industry is distressed, and I do not, I would not want anybody to carry any news that uh, the banking industry or indeed any bank is distressed. We would like to appeal to any, everybody, all depositors, to be calm. There is no need to leave in the impression that any bank is distressed. We would, as Central Bank of Nigeria, as the regulator, we've been holding, we've held discussions with NDIC, and I want to assure all of us that no depositor, no deposit is at risk at this time. Customers should continue to do their business the way uh, they have been conducting them in all the banks. He also denied reports that the Apex Bank was interfering in the country's new exchange rate regime. Nigeria embraced a floating exchange regime last month, doing away with the long tradition of pegging ex its exchange rate. The new policy, which has been in operation for about one month now, is expected to help Africa's largest economy deal with its foreign exchange problems, occasioned by the fall in the price of crude oil, which is the country's main foreign exchange earner. But recently, there have been reports that the CBN may have begun interfering in the new Forex policy. Emifili says it's simply not true. It is not true that Central Bank has been involved in interfering in the exchange rate regime. It is a flexible exchange rate regime. Prices are determined based on market forces of demand and supply. But it is important to emphasize that central bank remains a player in that market. Indeed, till now, central bank is a major player. They were, we began to see that other players are beginning to return. And some of the returns that you read in the newspapers about the bids and sales of, of the banks, you would have seen that there are other autonomous sources and other sources that are coming in. And we are very gratified and hopeful uh, that this is happening because this is what we want. 
Oil prices edged lower on Wednesday, extending losses to a third straight session. Brent crude was down 30 cents at $47.66 per barrel, while U.S. crude traded at $46.35 per barrel. UK's decision to exit the EU has caused concern about economic growth in the region. The British pound slumped to a new 31-year low against the dollar early on Wednesday. This came after three UK property funds were suspended in the face of a rush of redemptions from investors fearing a slump in British property values. The death toll from Sunday's suicide bombing in, in Iraqi capital Baghdad has now risen to more than 250. The Iraqi government says this makes it the deadliest attack since the 2003 U.S.-led invasion. A lorry packed with, with explosives was detonated in the Karada district while families were shopping for the holiday marking the end of Ramadan. So-called Islamic State ISIS has said it carried out the suicide attack. Iraq remains under an official state of mourning following the bombing. Theresa May, Home Secretary of the UK, has won the first round of elections to replace David Cameron as Prime Minister. May, who was tipped to be the second female Prime Minister of the UK, polled 165 votes ahead of Andrea Leedsom, Michael Gove, Stephen Crabb, who polled 66, 48 and 34 votes respectively. The winner of that vote will become the new, the new Conservative leader and Prime Minister of the UK. The winner is expected to be officially announced in September. Former Olympian Oscar Pistorius has been sentenced to six years in prison for the murder of his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp. The minimum sentence for his offense was 15 years, but the judge, Tokozile Masipa, approved a lesser sentence. Masipa was the same judge who gave him his former sentence of five years for manslaughter. The, that judgment has been described as fundamentally flawed. During sentencing on Wednesday, she said, mitigating circumstances such as rehabilitation and remorse outweighed aggravating factors for the prescribed 15-year sentence for murder. The state still retains an option to appeal the decision. Barcelona forward Lionel Messi and his father, Jorge Messi, have both been sentenced to 21 months imprisonment for tax evasion. However, since both men have no prior criminal history and the sentence is below two years, they will not spend no time behind bars. Messi and his father, Jorge, who, manage, who manages his financial affairs, are accused of defrauding Spain of more than 4 million euros between 2007 and 2009. Messi says he wasn't aware of the tax arrangements set in place by his father and other advisors. Former Barcelona coach Tata Martino has resigned from his post as the head coach of the Argentinian national team less than a month to the start of the Rio Olympic Games. Martino took, who took over from Alejandro Sabella after the 2014 World Cup resigns after leading the country to two consecutive Copa America finals. He, however, lost both finals to Chile. Martino was supposed to, was supposed to coach the team to the Olympics this summer. That's all we have on news now. We thank you very much for watching. I am Thelma Okuru.